Welcome to lecture 8. In this lecture we'll take a look at the code of the two helper functions. The two helper functions provide data to set the attributes for the bar and the text elements. The two helper functions take in the values from our sensor, which we have stored in our data object. Of course, for now this is still mockup data, but later on this will be replaced with our real sensor data. The setColors function also takes in the bar name as a reference to the bar for which it needs to calculate the color. First we take a look at the createAttributes function. The fixed attributes array contains attributes that are the same for all bars. Each item in this array is an array on itself that contains the attribute name and the value. So we see that the attribute visible is set to false and the width and depth of each box is set to a fixed value. As the maximum height of each bar is 1, we need to scale our sensor data. In the scaled data object, we see that the range for all bars are remapped so they fit in a range of 0 to 1. Again, we are using the same names as in our sensor data array. Similar to the loop we have used in our init function, we iterate over our sensor data array and we create a variable bar name as a reference. The bar object is the object in which we store the attributes of this iteration and in the last line you see that we store them in our attributes object. Again, the bar name is our reference or the key in this object. We use the from entries method to add the fixed attributes to the bar object of this iteration. The position attribute is concatenated from the values we construct for x and y and the fixed value for z. You see we shift the x position with each iteration by 0.5. This is exactly what we have discussed in our grid. And so the bars follow the grid we have set out for our icons. To be able to align all bars at the bottom, we first set out a margin of minus 0.9 and then compensate it with half the height of the bar, which is equal to half the range we have calculated in our scaled data object for each bar. Then we construct the height attribute of our bar. This is equal to the value we have stored in our scaled data object for this bar name. To set the color attribute, we call the setColors helper function. This takes in the bar name and all the sensor values as its argument. Finally, we add our bar object, containing all the attributes of the bar, to our general attributes object. So this is in the end where we store all attributes of all bars. Then it's time to take a look at the setColors function. This function uses maps, they are arrays with colors in hexadecimals, and it uses a switch case to decide which color should be added to which attribute. There are four maps for the colors of the bars and one for the color of the text. Now selecting colors for bars is again a design decision, so there is always room for discussion. For example, I have chosen the colors from blue to red for the temperature bar. This makes sense from a human perspective. Blue cold, red warm. But if you approach it from a warning system's point of view, you might consider to use the red color also for negative temperatures because they are harmful for your strawberry plant. In other words, if you want our data representation to express the danger for your strawberry plant, maybe you come to different choices about the colors of the bars. The choices for the text colors are based on contrast. So which color will contrast that of the bar which is behind it? Then we come to our switch case. It takes in the bar name as the argument. It evaluates the argument on the sensor data array. And this is how the switch knows for which bar it is deciding on the colors. So altogether there are four cases, which is equal to the number of items in the sensor data array. And in each case, the color of the bar is chosen depending on the matching sensor value, which is given as an argument. This involves the use of if statements, evaluating the sensor value. For the text color, the choice, the value is stored in our text colors object. And for the bar color, the value is returned. Remember that we have called this setColors function from the other helper function, which creates the attributes. 
so the returning value is used in that function. We are now looking at the case for the temperature bar, but the cases for the other bars are very similar. The humidity bars actually use only one color for the bar and of course one text color. The light intensity bar has more different colors. The switch case is ended with a default. This is for when the switch case receives an argument that is not part of one of the cases. And that finishes up our helper functions. So now we have a complete working application. Our next step will be to integrate it in the dashboard we are building for the Strawberry Fields project. See you in the next lecture.